today we have in the interview commander vikram rajan who has served in indian navy for more than two decades as a submariner as a group testing officer and currently he has a venture of ssb ducks where he trains the aspirants so today we'll try to understand his journey in indian navy as a gt officer and his entrepreneurial venture so welcome sir thank you for coming on the interview today thank you thank you very much uh, akash for inviting me for this wonderful session which will we, which will have and hope all the aspirants who are there would at least at the end of it would uh, have some takeaways uh, with them uh, when they are uh, all pursuing their uh, dreams of becoming part of the elite defense forces of the army navy and the air force yes so how was the life of a submariner in terms of your your perspective how how does it feel to be you know underwater warrior how does it feel to be so uh, we call uh, we call ourselves as the sentinels of the deep and uh, the summer, the indian navy's uh, submarine arm is one of the most elite arms in the whole of the world and it's a complete volunteer organization and i remember uh, i had i am a part of the indian naval academy at that time it was in goa and we were all uh, taken to various ships aircrafts and submarines and after that we were training in tir and that is the first time in my life i was able to go into a submarine which was based out of bombay and that set me uh, thinking yes this could be an arm where i want to be in the future uh, prior to uh, joining the navy i was impressed by the movie top gun as many of us are and at that time the aspirations were to fly high uh, like uh, uh, the movie top gun uh, but uh, yeah i mean this intrigued me and uh, somewhere the first seeds of joining the submarine arm uh, was set in there and then after uh, luckily for me after finishing my training as i was a midshipman the first uh, ship that i uh, was supposed to do was called as ayana samba Okay. Uh, it's, a, it's now decommissioned. It was a mothership. You call it for all the submarines for their logistic support. It's a very, very really unique ship, and there I got to meet a lot of uh, submariners who were posted out there, and that really inspired me, and that made me decide firmly that yes, I want to become part of the submarine arm. And uh, yes, uh, since then it has been one roller coaster road uh, right throughout the submarine arm, and. Uh, became part of the submarine arm in the year 1995 yes uh, we have our training base at iras satwana in visakhapatnam where uh, we have to go our basic submarine training and the escape training school we have got a very unique feature which is not available in many parts of the world anybody few navies have got this escape training school where they actually simulate as to how you escape out of a submarine in case it is sunk under water so you have to clear that uh, that uh, tells you whether you are claustrophobic or not or whether you can handle the rigors of the submarine life and went uh, clear that with flying colors and thereafter became part of the submarine arm after doing my basic submarine training okay. and uh, yeah i mean every day that i spent out there was uh, uh, an adventure in itself i mean the, the kind of things that we were able to do and experience is phenomenal i mean i remember many friends of mine who were part of the surface navy ships and the uh, aviators the flyboys i mean they always were in, uh, always curious to know uh, as to how this life in a, a submarine is and let me tell you i mean like it is it's it's a completely different world under water mm-hmm. and uh, one of the important things that you learn is to have that the grit and the stamina and the and the patience to sweat it out underwater yeah mm-hmm. uh, sir if you can just tell us you know how was your journey of joining indian navy how did you decide what motivated you to join indian navy see uh, i i come from a semi kind of defense background couple of my uncles were there in the navy uh, before i joined and a couple of them were in the army so somewhere uh, it was always there ki i was always impressed by the uniforms but i am i am i am a south indian from karnataka hardcore bangalore but born and brought up in delhi and uh, all these people used to keep coming and going and visiting us when i was a small child uh, and and that always impressed me but nothing concrete had taken place by then 
Uh, it was one time when I had gone to see a, a naval band in uh, uh, play in one of the uh, uh, beating retreats, which was there in on the 26th of January. Ke baad after the three days, the beating and I remember. I mean, that really impressed me. Mm-hmm. And from then on, I always uh, wanted to be part of the navy. But somehow it didn't materialize uh, after the gradu- uh, the twelfth class. And I waited for my doing my graduation, which I did from Delhi University. Okay. And uh, thereafter, uh, all other people were planning to give their entrance exam for IIMs, and I was planning to give my entrance exam for IMA. So that is where the the, the paths uh, changed. And uh, I gave my CDS exam, and thereafter qualified, and uh, I was part of the. I, I got cleared from twelve SSB. Uh, Bangalore, and I am a repeater. I mean, I got uh, conferenced out in 33 SSB Bhopal, mm-hmm. and thereafter, that is the time I realized he yes, what this thing is all about. Though I knew some part of it, but uh, there it actually hit me. Ki, this requires a little bit of preparation, a little bit of more introspection, and a uh, little bit of more understanding about yourself. And then the next time when I came to 12 SSB Bangalore. I mean, I was fully prepared and uh, passed out uh, the whole thing uh, with uh, full josh. Mm-hmm. And I still remember when I got recommended and I was waiting for my merit list. And uh, my mother told me one thing: uh, You are joining the navy. Don't go into deeper waters. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I joined the submarine up there after. So 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 yeah. So that was the journey and. Uh, I was a non-swimmer. I mean, between the merit list and going to the joining academy, I learned uh, my swimming. Uh, so that I, I thought uh, this would be an important aspect in the whole uh, journey. And yes, believe you me, it was really important because right at the uh, beginning, I mean, like we were made to jump from all over the places to into the swimming pool, and thereafter, in tier, uh, jumping from the uh, ships onto the sea. And getting trained, and all those things, uh, the preparation of mine helped me in my training also. Yes. Okay. Uh, sir, if you can put some light on, you know, your academy life in Indian Naval Academy, uh, how was it? You know, if some memorable experience that you have, which you would like to share from the INA life. Yeah. See, uh, I was obviously from the CDS thing, so I was a graduate, and there you get an overstudy all youngsters from the ten plus two. NDA kind of thing. At that time, it was the training was done in Goa. Uh, we, we were now it has shifted to uh, Pinur Indian Naval Academy, Pinur in Kerala. During that time, it was in Goa, and I'm part of the 43rd ICC uh, course. Uh, it, it had newly started uh, uh, this this course. Uh, we were the third batch of that, and uh, 43rd ICC, and uh, I mean, like I remember, I mean, going there. And getting down uh, in front of the gate of the Naval Academy, it was a uphill uh, road towards the gates of the Goa uh, INS Mandavi. It was called then, and it is still there, but it is used for something else. The training for something else. So INS Mandavi, and we were all very style. We have got recommended, and now we will become officers. But the moment you land up there, all your trunks are put in one place, and then you start rolling, and then the. By rolling, you keep going to the place where the barber shop is there, and uh, you get your first katora cut. That's what we call them, and uh, zero cut, and then the life starts. And memorable moment, yeah, I remember. I was a very thin, underweight kind of uh, cadet, and uh, I mean, but and if you actually look at my photographs out then, I mean, I could be a famished kind of from a from the malnourished kind of. Place I am coming to, but you will not believe it. Uh, with the kind of exercise and the training that was there, I could polish off one pound of bread in my breakfast. I mean, like that was the capacity and the the the, the kind of calories that you required. And uh, we had a lot of uh, fun in the academy. And uh, the whole time was trying to escape and not to get caught uh, doing something wrong or not uh, adhering to timings. So it was from one uh, ragada session to the other, other ragada session to some uh, studies, and uh, all those people who thinks uh, defense or navy is all about uh, just adventure. 
there are a lot of studies in it lot of technical studies lot of concepts lot of tactics strategy and all that and uh, so the time completely was spent between either getting a ragada or studying on some concepts or uh, in the naval uh, this thing so yeah i mean uh, every day was a memorable moment and i still remember the day of passing out from the naval academy and uh, getting ready to go to ins tir in cochin which is still there and that training after the naval academy the tir i still remember uh, it we joined uh, the academy on the 28th of december somewhere mm-hmm. and uh, we were on board ships the first time we were posted there as cadets cadets out there sea cadets that we used to call ourselves and the 31st we said we will have a good uh, new year bash on board the ship and the 12 o'clock we were polishing our shoes and uh, the new year passed then after we we were polishing our shoes for the next one hour to ensure that you can see your face through the uh, the polished boots mm. uh, the drill boots that we have and the uh, 10 minutes the water was open to take bath and thereafter by 1 o'clock we were all asleep fast asleep mm-hmm. for the next day training so that is how the whole training started on board ins tir okay yeah. uh so my next question is basically see somebody joins as a you know navy officer in indian navy how does one opt for the submarine arm and what is the process looks like in terms you know i have read that there is some psychological test some medical standards as well so how does that process look like see as such there is no psychological test per se but once you uh, become an officer you do your basic uh, courses uh, training courses uh, you are there so there are three branches if you know there are three major branches in the navy that is the executive branch which is the uh, the fighting arm of the navy then you got the electrical branch which looks after the maintenance of the electrical systems on board and then you have got the engineering branch which looks after the engineering aspects and maintenance of the equipment as far as engineering features are concerned so all these three people uh, after doing their basic courses uh, and after doing their uh, standard uh, sea time on board any sh- ship you can volunteer for the submarine arm it's a completely volunteer organization so once you get volunteered for that then the medical test takes place a little more uh, um, complex uh, i mean a little more detailed medical test uh, which is required for you in the uh, submarine arm and once you qualify that medical test thereafter you go to ins satwahana and uh, the first thing that you do out there is something called as a ets escape training school basically uh, it's a very unique feature which we have and uh, where basically there are three types of simulations which take place to see whether you can escape out of a submarine in case of necessity uh, in case of any issues which happen and once you qualify that that is the thing where you have the aptitude to stay inside a submarine for long hours because mm-hmm. there you don't see the sunlight it's a very claustrophobic kind of environment out there uh, with no uh, direct openings to the 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 weather or the atmosphere or I mean, it, you are you are in an enclosed uh, capsule so once you do that thereafter uh, the theoretical part of the submarine uh, training takes place the basic submarine course okay once you do that it's about a six months course that you do thereafter you are posted to one of the submarines all over so we have got two submarine bases one is in bombay and one is in vizag and uh, you get posted to one out submarine or uh, say if there are 10 people you get one one each in the summer uh, each submarine is there then you go a practical training takes place so that takes place somewhere between 6 to 8 months and then you get something called as a submarine watch keeping ticket okay so the submarine watch keeping ticket is the one which ensures for an executive officer that yes he can handle the submarine independently because uh, in the naval uh, fraternity uh, whenever you are posted on board any ship or submarine we have got something called as a watch system so every 3 hours in the submarine arm and every 4 hours in the ships there there's there's a change of guard uh, mm-hmm. some some sailors and officers take uh, post to run the submarine and the other people go and do their normal work mm-hmm. so there, there's a watch system three tier watch system so for in the watch system there is one officer who is called as a watch keeping officer who is 
the person who is running the ship on behalf of the commanding officer. Okay. So, so this watchkeeping ticket will ensure that you can become that watchkeeping officer who is running the submarine on behalf of the commanding officer for those three hours mm -hmm. in the in the submarine, and it's a four hours watch system in the ships. So you can run that. So that is a very very important aspect of the whole training process. Similarly, for the electrical and the engineering officers who are there in the technical arm, so they have to do again their watchkeeping uh, uh, in the submarine to get that watchkeeping ticket in the submarine now, so that they can do. Uh, so there are two watchkeepers on board a uh, submarine. Some one is the executive watchkeeper and one is a technical watchkeeper. Okay. So yeah, both of them do that. So once you do that. there after you become you get your coveted dolphins so we call it a dolphins so uh, once you get the dolphin there after you are considered that you have become a pro blue submariner yes uh, so as a submariner so how does your one ideal day looks like any ideal day how in in terms of your routine you know how does that look like yeah that's a that's a very interesting question uh, so a submarine out at sea it's a it's a different ball game so i will discuss that because uh, once in your harbor you are basically your time is uh, involved in planning for the next sortie which is there, the next uh, sailing which is there and getting the things ready logistically and maintenance and what kind of exercise we are likely to do in the future so all those things plannings are the ones in which we spend our time on uh, to prepare for the next sailing in the in, in the in the out at sea when we are there so again it is all about the exercises which we are going to have so many people ask us ki what is it that you do when there is no war around mm. so it's all about preparing for that war so the training uh, we pay a lot of emphasis on training so train 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 so that it comes as a second nature to us so that we can react the right way when the actual uh, situation arises uh, which has to be handled and we train for that all 365 days so on a normal day there would be some ships or aircrafts with which we would be operating or some other submarine which we would be operating at and preparing and simulating uh, different types of exercises out there at the sea and uh, it could be something like a casa vac it's a casual uh, casualty evacuation or something called as ras replenishment at sea or some anti submarine warfare operations or some maritime patrol aircraft ke sath some kind of uh, exercise so that how we can uh, uh, link up together and use some network centric warfare uh, to ensure uh, detection ranging sonar operations simulated torpedo firing simulated missile firing so the whole day out there uh, is uh, doing all these exercises and again as i told you that there is a watch system so every 3 hours one third of the ships company or the submarines company take post as watch keepers the other two thirds are doing something else or or resting so once three hours are over the next watch comes into the picture so the first watch which was already there will go and take rest mm -hmm. and and one so like that every six hours your watch comes so mm -hmm. that goes on right throughout okay and uh, one more very interesting fact uh, that we have is uh, uh, submarine operations are all done basically in the night if there are night operations and because of stealth requirements and uh, uh, if we are going on a long sailing if we are going on a long sailing then what we do is we interchange our days into nights and nights into days so that uh, we are awake during the nights so in one and a half days of our operations every we have a 20 uh, not a 24 hour day we have an 18 hour day and there are 12 hour day so every 6 hours we advance and in in two or three days the day becomes night and night becomes day so that uh, for other people if it is night 2 uh, o'clock or 2 am in the morning for us it is afternoon to 2 2 pm and we are having our lunch at that time so okay. the whole routine changes okay. so that we are uh, alert during the night and sleep during the day so that is one one very unique feature that we have uh, in the submarine arm yes uh, so that is how the routine 
so if i ask you three life lessons which you know the armed forces the submarine life has taught you what will be those three life lessons which you would like to share see again uh, the first important lesson which the submarine arm teaches you is patience and uh, having the mental stamina to withstand the pressures of a solitary submarine life so 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 that is it. the mental stamina it, it builds your uh, mental stamina the second most important thing is uh, morality because a lot of things are based on trust and integrity where every person has got a job to do and he does it without any supervision or instructions okay and that is what it, and the third most important lesson which is hard work always pays i mean this submarine arm is one of the most hard working arms and uh, because to maintain a very complex uh, technological marvel called the submarine it requires a tremendous amount of hard work to maintain those submarines mm -hmm. and uh, let me assure you uh, each one of us out there in the submarine arm puts in 110% to ensure those that those weapon platforms are ready for battle at any given time and that is what it taught me to never give up and in fact one of my mottos of life which one of my seniors used to have and i borrowed it from him and uh, is bash on regardless so with that motto the summary name goes and uh, uh, so to 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 take on at whatever cost to be available for the defense of the nation so that is what it has taught me okay uh sir you are also a group testing officer and now you have a academy called ssb ducks so if you could briefly tell us you know uh, what ssb ducks does how is your you know uh, way of you know guiding the aspirants how does that look like if you can just briefly tell that thing yeah so see uh in 2005 i did my gto training course at the dipr uh, delhi it's a drdo affiliated organization where they teach you about the psychological techniques of the uh, requirements for uh, becoming an ssr and uh, it's a very very rigorous uh, course the gto training course and uh, once you do the theoretical course thereafter you are part of the whole uh, uh, ssr community and then you do a practical training in one of the ssbs anywhere in the country it could be allahabad bangalore bhopal uh, or new ones have come in during my time these were the three main now visakhapatnam has come diamond harbor has come gandhi nagar has come air force academies were already there right? dehradun varanasi and uh, mysore now one has come in kapurthala a mm -hmm. new one has come so you can be posted anywhere as a practical training phase once you do that and let me tell you the selection rate for a gto is 1 in 10 so mm -hmm. 10 people come as gtos only one gets recommended as a gto it's a very tough course because it's an aptitude based course so 2005 i cleared my uh, practical training uh, again my I, i give full regard to my instructor colonel sagal of guards and uh, he taught me uh, and then colonel chauhan who again taught me the, the the nuances of the gto technique and uh, i would take this opportunity to thank them for giving the right guidance and thereafter for 12 years i was a gto okay. in bhopal for 5 years and in the same 12 ssb from where i got recommended for 6 years and thereafter again 2 years in coimbatore nsb coimbatore now it is closed and that is where i retired so in these 12 years i have seen all entries all kind of cadets all type of people hundreds and thousands of stage ones about 20 25000 stage ones i have more than 1000 uh, candidates i have recommended myself uh, in these 12 years and many of them are uh, and nearly all of them are in various academies army navy air force nda afa and all kinds of uh, situations as far as uh, the whole uh, ssb procedure is concerned i have been part of it and uh, somewhere during in my 25th year of my service i decided to see the corporate world uh, to see because that was in my bucket list to see what this corporate world is about 
तो आई डिड माई आई एम अहमदाबाद कोर्स देर आफ्टर गॉड कैंपस प्लेस इन आई एम अहमदाबाद इन एम एन सी कंपनी ऑपरेटिंग इन बॉम्बे इट वॉज एन इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर कंपनी आई वॉज हेडिंग देर प्रोजेक्ट मैनेजमेंट हेड हैंडलिंग रेवेन्यूज ऑफ थ्री थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड क्रोर्स टिल जनवरी ऑफ ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी एंड I was also a part of the business development uh, program of theirs in the CIS and the European region and the African region. So that time I decided, ki no, I think I have to give it back to the society and uh, understand uh, uh, and make people understand what leadership is all about. So that is the time I decided to take up a venture and see uh, how this can be uh, taken forward. So the other bucket list came in. to give it back to the society and during this time uh, i am planning to open up a venture called a uh, ducks and dusendi which will help people to gain leadership roles in the corporate world and also ssb ducks academy which will help the defense aspirants to be, take leadership roles in the defense forces so this is a two pronged approach of mine to help the corporate world and to help the uh, defense to get the right people out there and the, uh, to make people understand the right thing so the whole uh, genesis of the whole thing started from here and a small anecdote which i would like to give here is what is ducks so ducks and descendants is a parent organization it is basically a latin word for leader and leadership okay so it's a latin word for leader and leadership out of which i have taken out the ducks part which is latin for leader or a general or a, a com- commander who was part of the roman legion okay so that is where i have taken the up and i have given an acronym which i truly believe in is direction under experts so in today's environment i see in india there are so many uh, youtube channels people giving lot of gyan lot of uh, things floating around in the in, in the social media instagram facebook youtube telegram twitter and i find i mean somewhere the children uh, and the students and the aspirants are uh, not able to get the right information as to what we look at out here in the ssb so my endeavor here is to ensure that you get on the right path the right direction if somebody can give the right direction more than 50% of your problem is solved in life for the aspirants see so my thing is not ki as to what you have to go do in the ssb the whole approach of this academy the ducks academy ssb ducks academy is about improving your personality see many people come to me say sir i have been uh, not recommended last five times four times six times in fact 24 times 18 times all these figures come sir what have you then i ask the question see what preparations have you done Because, sir, I have prepared 500 SRTs. Mm. I have prepared 500 WATs. I have given 200 stories. I, man, uncle, buddy, you have been wrong in life. What have you done to improve your personality? That question we are not able to answer. Mm. So, please, in case you all are aspiring to become part of the elite defense forces, improve your personality. and that will in turn help you to clear the ssb mm-hmm. and the whole approach of this ducks academy is in that one more example i will just give you sir he a person will call up my organization and ask ki sir what is your course program how do you do and all that so i said ki this is so and so so and so this way so he said okay sir i will join next month i said why he said sir my ssb dates have not come i say hello i mean that is the best situation to be in so your ssb dates have not come so you have got time to prepare your personality so my take is start early get on the right path so that 6 to 8 months or one year you give yourself prepare and thereafter go and give your ssb i am 100% sure that you will get recommended so please don't wait for the last time sir i will give one interview just before going to the ssb mm-hmm. hello 
if if a problem comes out in your personality how where do you have the time to uh, improve on your personality so these are the things that i feel that somewhere the the aspirants have gone wrong in the way they are preparing for the ssb so the whole idea of this organization is to get them on the right path mm -hmm. and that is why the name of direction under it give you the direction mm -hmm. the right direction yeah i hope that answers your question akash yes sir uh so there are few questions you know the aspirants asked me when i told you, you know you are coming on the interview so the few gto related question that they have asked me so i'll just put it to you you can you know give your perspective about those questions so yeah. sir the first question is regarding gpe that the group planning exercise so you know there are a lot of you know problem statement given in that gp that brief that is given to us there are some important uh, priorities some are low priorities से किसी गाय यहाँ पे अटक गई है तो उसको बचाना है ऑल दो प्रियोरिटी कम्स इन बट जी टी विल नेवर टेल यू नो की डेट की क्या डिस्टेंस है क्या टाइम है वो सब मेंशन करना या इस तरीके से ये फॉर्मेट में लिखना बट देर लॉर्ड ऑफ कोचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट ब्लॉग्स राइटिंग नो दिस इज द फॉर्मेट बट नो जी टी इज एवर टूल दिस इन अ ब्रीफ की दिस हाउ यू टू राइट सो वॉट इज योर टेक ऑन दैट यू नो हाउ डू हैंडल जी पी आई मीन लाइक ऑब्वियसली देर इज नो सेट फॉर्मेट एंड 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 i have been a gto and taken phenomenal live batches out there and the moment you see at the sheet of paper it comes to know you come to know yes this is all preconceived way of writing see my take on this would be be logical out there i mean and write in detail because two things are there why you write out there one is to ensure that once you write down you have committed yourself to whatever thought process has gone out in your mind mm -hmm. and thereafter you will be able to recollect when you are doing the discussion second thing you want it also gives a very clear indication to the gto the situational awareness that you have i'm i'm using the word very important word which many of the gtos don't tell the situational awareness of the model which is there as to how you perceive those those situations with what detail are you writing there whether you have understood all the essentials of that problem are you able to to uh, understand what exactly the situation and what kind of possibilities would be there when you solve it so most of the time the candidates whatever coaching institutes and people tell they leave out on many of the essentials the details which are required they don't go in depth Mm -hmm. as to how they have to solve the problem it is all in the superficial level because if you write in the superficial level <coughs> you will not be able to translate all that during the discussion also there will be some kind of gap so if you write say 80% after understanding the survey you will be speaking on that 80% only 60% you will be able to translate when you are discussing mm -hmm. and that famous fish market which all of you call is always there so in that fish market you will have to come up with the solution in detail so many of the times the whole discussion peters down to in the superficial level maximum the people do is inform regarding the problem to some of the authorities again you are joining the different forces to become that authority whom people are informing and here you are come here to clear the ssb of being an informant ki we will inform the police we will inform the sarpanch we will inform the bank we will inform the railway authorities we will inform uh, the people info hello are you there to inform or in in the defense we are the people who are informed by other people so you have to start thinking as to what actions you are going to take and that is a very very important aspect which many of the people miss out there in the uh, group planning exercise mm -hmm. and always remember any task that you do in the group planning it's uh, in the in the gto series there are two aspects you need to keep in mind one as the aspect is the clarity of thought which is an essential part of uh, you uh, when you are discussing clarity of thought what is it that i have the problem statement which has been given what is it that i have to do so that 100% that problem will be solved and the second thing is this clarity of thought how you can translate in the group in that melee 
of uh, the fish market how with assertiveness with being assertive without become part of the problem of shouting like others you were able to tell others what you want to say logically right. and these two aspects has to be uh, in the right uh, per, understood in the right perspective for you to clear this group learning exercise correct so discussion and understanding the problem statement and uh, understanding the essentials of the resources that have been given and how you solve it yes mm -hmm. so that answers my question of you know gp part uh, so we spoke about the command task you know what exactly is the purpose of command task you know you have seen the candidate performing in your know, progressive group task half group task you know what the capability of a candidate is among the 10 people but still we go ahead with the command task uh, so what is the purpose of command task and you know what are you testing there see again command task is a unique feature it is one of the parts of the individual kind of task so the first four tasks that you have is uh, everything is in a group that is the the group discussion the group planning the progressive group task and the group obstacle race or the uh, snake race what we call it, where each one of you can decide as to what role you want to play in the whole group whether you want to talk in the group discussion or you don't want to talk to in the group discussion whether you want to shout your way through or you want to tell things assertively in a logical manner with confidence group planning exercise may do you make a superficial plan it is left up to or you make a complex detailed plan out there taking all aspects in the progressive group that you can decide whether you want to go ahead stand back go left go right not talk you can take a role snake race may you can decide as to where you want to be the first last or you want to hold the snake shout the war cry what is it the, as and when we keep doing that it all we are forcing things on you in, in fact command task is the only task in which the gto decides which task you have to go to even in the individual obstacles you decide which obstacle you want to do in mm -hmm. the lecture it you decide which topic you want to speak on mm -hmm. understood but in the command task the gto decides which task you have to go to you can't decide mm -hmm. so that is the time what he sees is have you understood there are three four things that that could be looked at I, i'm not saying that is the one which you look at but could be looked at it could be seeing ki whether you are able to solve complex problems or not it could be used to see whatever he has understood about you when you were doing the group task whether what he has understood about your personality is confirming or not by giving you a command task it could be it could be also used to understand whether you have understood what has to be done what does it take for the essentials of the problem which is there and understand and thereafter uh, implement it correctly or not it could be used to understand how well you are in organizing your thoughts onto the practical board because it is not to command one thing command task is not about is to command people so that is one more places where people go wrong they start commanding people out there gentlemen please come here please don't break rules follow whatever i am doing i am the commander for this task please lift up the plank lift up the balli lift up the rope i will tell you when to go ahead see sorry again it is not to command people it is to see as to how you show your leadership skills how you show your solution uh, and problem solving skills how you show your actual personality because that is the time the gto gets a chance to see whatever he has understood about your personality very very clearly because the focus is on you and you are forced to complete the task mm -hmm. so 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 that is how the command task has to be looked at okay yeah. yes usually command task me you know that you know people ask ki should i ask my you know subordinates to go and go in front and guide them or you know i will lead and uh, wherever i need help so wo question bar bar aata hai so yes, you made it very yes, clear yeah, yeah, yeah. see the task has been given to you hmm. it is your responsibility to do the task hmm. we, we, are, we want to look at you not at your teammates who are doing the task correct this should so so the best so see there is nothing wrong in the ssb there is there is no only thing is what could be the best thing done the best thing that 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 could be done is you are given the responsibility of doing the task you do it 
with the help of the others obviously uh, you can't do things alone you you can't hold the balli the plank and the rope tight also all those things you can't do it so you are given some two of the, two of the people to do it that's about it mm. but the responsibility is yours so we want you to do it okay so that that would be the best way to do a command task so, but obviously if you're not able to do then thereafter it starts getting diluted and some point in time we realize ki yes the problem solving capabilities the kind of personality he is there it is not uh, meeting the requirements of the defense services okay okay so 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 one has to understand as to when you are going down and when you are crossing the threshold and coming below that yeah okay uh, so just few questions on the you know the interview part so there are a lot of people yeah. in the io will ask you if you are going for a navy interview about you know technical stuff if you are going for a say a, a pilot entry they'll ask you about aircraft if you're going for you know normal navy they will ask you about the ships and submarines and everything so how does one prepare for it to what detail should they know if you could just help us understand because you were part of that system see again uh, uh, very important so first of all i want to tell you all the three services uh, require a lot of technical knowledge whether you like it or not because nowadays the defense forces are becoming highly technical a lot of high technology weapons high technology sensors high technology platforms network centric warfare so all these things are part of parcel of the defense forces in today's environment so you have to be have that technical bent of mind apart from being that adventurous bent of mind to take on the risk calculated risk which we talk about so yeah so one of the things why we ask these questions is to see your motivation level as to you are going to be part of the defense services minimum if you are a short service commission officer of 10 or 14 years and if you are a permanent commission officer minimum 20 years so have you understood what would be my job profile what kind of equipment that i would be working at or any interest that you show uh, that yes i mean i am interested in this and and it's i want to make it part of my life so that is one of so second aspect is ki do you have the technical bent of mind to understand ki the, the theory that you have learned in your engineering colleges and your uh, other colleges and school whether you are able to relate that to uh, the the weapons and the sensors and the platforms that we have out in the defense forces so we want to know that and third important thing is have you done justice to your engineering because we always hear sir he has done an engineering but he is unemployable mm -hmm. so many of the times the candidates come to me what have you been doing sir i have been preparing for my ssb for how long uh, sir uh, past two years i passed out in 2018 engineering and now is 2020 what have you sir i campus placement sir i wanted to prepare so i gave myself the drop okay very good you are motivated okay tell me three naval ships and then he will start hunting for the word sir vikram aditya or uh, sir is it ines virat virat got decommissioned ages back vikram before that the next vikram is not yet commissioned <laughs> which fighter aircraft sir rafael what is rafael that i don't know sir which missile does india have which is going to take on uh, our adversaries sir uh, some agni series is there sir see i mean like it is as if matlab superficial knowledge so what is it that we want to know ki whether you have understood say a mechanical engineer comes the first thing that he should be interested in uh, in navy is the the propulsion system that the navy has or if he is going to the air force what kind of uh, engines are in, in in a rafael or in a mig 29 or or what kind of engines are we having in a chinook helicopter so he should be interested in that his own job for which he has studied for four years so we want to see that correlation between this and that so that is the reason we ask all these questions about the uh, forces okay so technically are you sound or not yes correct mm, okay. got a point sir so some more question on the gto part okay so you spoke about the individual obstacle you know i have seen people doing only three doing only four you know how, how do you evaluate them uh, there are people who are getting recommended with doing only two or three tasks so what part of you know assessment do you do when you see as a candidate doing all those tasks what do you look at them 
see one of the most important things about individual obstacles is how you do the task not how many you do the task mm-hmm. so this is again where people go wrong ki how sir i did 15 but how you did it sir i did 5 say for example if you do if i ask you openly if if you do four obstacles there is one candidate who does four obstacles and there is another candidate who does one obstacle who is better your question should be which of the four obstacles he has done okay. suppose a, a person does number 1 number 2 number 3 number 4 if mm. you add this he comes to 10 mm. total and the other candidate does only one which is number 10 whom do you think is better the one who has done the 10th one suppose he does only number 9 now this guy has done number 1 number 2 number 3 number 4 and he has got 10 points the other candidate has done number 9 the commando walk only mm-hmm. who do you think is better again the the who has done the commando walk you understand mm-hmm. so the number doesn't matter mm-hmm. it is which obstacle and how you have done it with what confidence level have you done that obstacle if you have done number 9 shaking sitting crawling on it it's another matter but if you do it with confidently and you're running on that obstacle your confidence level is high mm-hmm. your, your your courage factor your your uh, res- uh, able to withstand challenges your your ability to take on challenges is high so how you do it both of them have number done number 9 but thereafter my thing is how he has done number 9 mm-hmm. each one of them. that is what is more important in a individual obstacle rather than uh, going behind the numbers yeah yes Uh, so so my final question to you would be you know uh, what advice you would like to give to the aspirants how do we prepare because you know, there are a lot of information out there there are a lot of people who will say contradicting thing as well you know how do you make sure you know you are on the right track what will be your basic mantra see uh, i would give this with one very simple anecdote or a analogy hmm. see you are one get operated with some doctor hmm will you go to a quack or a com a person who is not actually a doctor but he has got lot of practice and he has done some or you will go to a genuine doctor a genuine doctor genuine doctor so similarly mm-hmm. here please find out in the environment who is the genuine guy who is giving you the right advice mm-hmm. because i find in the social media in various platforms of uh, electronic platforms lot of things that are going there is all wrong wrong information wrong thing just to impress the candidates lot of people are doing hundreds of things mm-hmm. is you have to identify what is it get on the right track as fast as possible understand like for example i'll just give you one more if you have cleared cds gk exam or another any does not mean your gk is good for the ssb because a gk for ssb is different for a gk for written exam so many people go wrong but i have cleared my cds exam for gk i am good at it but that gk is not relevant anymore in the ssb so please try to understand what is required out of you mm-hmm. like for example if you are giving a je exam you know 105 cut off if i i am getting 90 marks 95 marks i have got a chance but you know there is an 105 cut off then then you go and attempt it but you should know what is it required in the ssb and thereafter prepare towards that last one month preparation half a day 15 days preparation will not work get on the right track the right direction understand what is the requirement in uh, three four aspects improve your personality again one important thing improve your vocabulary and english mm-hmm. this is again a very very important aspect english grammatical mistakes not making the right words so prepare for your if you want to be an aspirant because all the, the so i'm not saying local language hindi yes you can speak because many other talk we do it in hindi but the instructions the way you speak the diction the, the the flow with which you speak improve on that because you will all be say a fighter aircraft guy would be on a mic on a mic here talking to the uh, people a naval uh, officer would be standing on a mic giving instructions to people who are in the deck mm-hmm. an army a person would be there on the walkie talkie instructing his men to to do the uh, operations or inside a tank giving command to people so your vo- voice your flow has to be very important so mm-hmm. 
prepare on your english whatever you i mean i'm not saying so you should be having a confidence in whatever say hindi mein bhi bol sakte nothing wrong in it so but whenever you talk in hindi and english to jab hindi mein bol rahe ho to hindi mein acha bolo jab english mein bol rahe ho to english mein acha bolo mm -hmm. don't mix that and make a khichdi out of it ओके सो दैट इज वन इज पार्ट आई स्पेंड एंड गेट ऑन द राइट डायरेक्शन कि क्या चाहिए हाफ द पीपल डोंट नो एज टू व्हाट इज इट दैट दे आर गेटिंग इनटू सो दैट वुड बी माय 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 मेजर एडवाइस देयर आर लॉट ऑफ कोचिंग इंस्टिट्यूट्स आर रन बाय लॉट ऑफ डिफरेंट पीपल बट हैज द यू नो द सिलेक्शन रेट इंक्रीज्ड और इट इज द सेम बिकॉज़ देयर आर लॉट ऑफ पीपल आउट देयर ट्रेनिंग लॉट ऑफ गाइस सी आई मीन अगेन अ वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन इफ आई एम कोचिंग एवरीबॉडी एवरीबॉडी शुड गेट रिकमेंडेड but see everybody uh, goes to all this uh, coaching institutes for clearing iit mm -hmm. does everybody get recommended in iit no i mean they are and they are the best premier institutions i, 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 I there and you know kota and uh, andhra and all these places so finally what a mentor a right mentor so first of all is to get a right mentor mm -hmm. who can tell you your problems many times it is that everybody is sitting in a classroom some gyan is given and then after finish off okay do well you are there read gk improve your communication skill go out but how to improve that communication what is the exact problem you have so right getting a right mentor is a first step mm -hmm. who can tell you these things okay and thereafter uh, i always give this uh, story see uh, you can make a horse go to the water but you can't make a drink mm -hmm. so the drinking part you people have to do so go, raste pe i can get you main raste mein leke aa sakta hu par bhagna apne mm -hmm. but my way is ki main itna bhagaunga ki aap thak jaoge so you will be tired so you will end up drinking the water okay okay yeah so so yeah finally out there when the so the whole process uh jo mera i got a uh, a process in which the whole training does takes place and various aspects of the whole training and uh, very shortly so i had this concept which i was telling people i was happy that my concept is working but somewhere down the line i realized ki there is one thing which is missing in the concept which i am teaching and that was a very very important aspect and that is performance in the ssb on that day many candidates of mine who are potentially 100% if they had come to the ssb they would have got cleared but unfortunately that day they didn't perform mm -hmm. sir aapne bataya tha but i didn't remember us time mein mujhe yaad nahi aaya sir i didn't remember that aapne you had told me that sir but unfortunately sir wo itna jaldi things were going on ki wo yaad nahi aaya wo mai soch raha tha i will tell that but wo hua nahi sir so performing on that day is a very important aspect which i have included in my whole philosophy of training okay. you have to perform on that day so your mental frame of mind has to be good and that is why i say ki start early give yourself 6 months to 1 year and constant pressure so that when the pressure is there out there in the gto uh, ground or the interview or when you are giving the site test naturally the right things comes out understood yeah. yeah so before we conclude if you can just you know tell us ki if somebody wants to join your you know guidance program how can they do it how can they approach and if you can just briefly tell that so see it's a whole uh, online course it is there i mean uh, and uh, the whole thing starts every monday every monday to friday morning 6:30 like an actual digital ground the ssb is there and uh, the whole uh, thing is online from 6:30 in the morning to about 10:30 in the uh, morning and thereafter i will tell you a few tips on doing the psychological tests and thereafter conduct a mock test of yours thereafter that test goes to uh, one of the uh, the uh, psychological psychologists who i got i got drdo scientists people who have retired and uh, as a, as a as a technical officer whom we call as psychologists uh, the of the uniformed uh, psychologists who are there with, with you in uniform so it goes to them they evaluate and thereafter give you the direction for preparation and where all are your uh, limit
limitations and weaknesses and how you prepare that gyan is given to you and i also carry out a mock test and thereafter try to see your piq forms because the starting point for a psych test and an interview is the piq form so many times nearly all the candidates who go don't fill up their piq forms correctly so the, the whole advice is given as to individually one to one see the psych technique ka feedback and the interview ka feedback and the piq ka feedback is given one to one personal feedback of at least minimum one one to two hours sometimes i have given it for three hours also for some from your candidates and thereafter i give that ki how to fill up the piq form how to relate this piq form to the interview how to relate this piq form to the psychological test which is a very very important aspect so this all these things takes place about 8 days thereafter i also give you one of the most important aspects of the ssb is the stage 1 where the maximum rejections take place so what are the ways in which you can clear that el ever elusive stage 1 okay so yeah so all these things take place in a period of 8 days and thereafter you can also get into a mentorship program which goes on for 3 months or 6 months where 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 one to one feedback whenever you want night 12 o'clock it can be given and people have asked me in the evening tomorrow they are standing in front of the ssb gate and sir one last doubt before i enter and they take my mobile phones sir how do i enter this that is also uh, answered okay so i had one doubt sir so that is also answered so this is a every monday program and uh, the num phone numbers and all will be uh, shared to you and you can contact the organization that academy and thereafter part me let me assure you you will not go disappointed because one aspect of is clearing the ssb but there are in the course there are so many life lessons for you that you will do better in life in whichever field you are in that much i will assure you okay and i i will promise you and in case you don't feel satisfied you don't have to pay me a single rupee that is a guarantee that i'm giving you if you're not satisfied with the 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 mentorship Uh, which i will give you so i don't transform people i just get them on the right path mm. everybody can get recommended provided you get on the right path we don't read need, require only one type of personality we need many types of personality so please don't try to be like someone else mm. so here i don't transform i don't change anything i don't do any of these things in whatever field you are in i ensure you that is the field that will ensure you to get to the recommended level okay so thanks a lot for your time sir today and i hope lot of aspirants will you know get benefited out of this video thanks a lot again sir i really hope so yeah. i really hope so i really hope so and akash i must thank you for giving this opportunity to get the message across to the thousands of people who are out there and uh, hope this small uh, message of mine uh, would go a long way in their lives to transform their uh, their lives for the better or their aspirations to become part of the defense forces so i in whichever little way that i can yeah thank you thank you very much thanks a lot sir jai hind jai hind jai hind